Hello everyone, I hope you find yourself having a great day. I've got another new tutorial for you for Cinema 4D and this one involves looping. Looping your animation, uh, looping camera movements, looping in general. And why would we want to loop? Well, looping is going to help you in uh, avoiding a lot of keyframes uh, setting in regards to if you have something that you want to continuously move, let's say for example you've got a gear that you want to move the entire time of the duration of your scene or a fan blade or a cogs or any objects that you want to repeat over and over and over again. Uh, how about a helicopter blade? It would be something that a loop would be very useful for. So let's get started. I've got my scene set up here and I've got a simple cylinder and some cubes and if we play that you'll see that it loops over and over and over and over again. And so it'll continue on through the scene and the end of the scene, jump to the forward of the uh, scene and continue playing. It's looping. It will never stop. So there's a few things you need to do to get your scene set up so that looping will work and you need to change the type of interpolation uh, of your uh, animation. So let's start by going under Edit, Project Settings. And from here, under Key Interpolation, make sure that you have Linear interpolation selected. If you were to have uh, the default which is spline selected, your animation would gradually speed up, then it would speed up quickly, and then it would gradually slow down, and so that would produce a rather unnatural looking uh, loop. So make sure you have linear interpolation selected. So let's get started. Um, I'll go ahead and delete this cube, and uh, it involves a cylinder and some cubes. So let's get started. We'll begin by creating a cylinder. And we're going to scale this guy down a little bit. And let's scale it out a little bit. Maybe we'll increase the uh, the uh, rotation segments. Let's bump that up to 50. That's not necessary. It just uh, helps with its, uh, the cleanliness of its appearance. All right, so while we've got that selected, we need to make it editable. Right-click it and choose Make Editable. All right. Now we need to rotate this guy so that our green axis is in the vertical plane. So we'll move this blue by clicking it and holding shift and we'll rotate it 90 degrees or you can go under the coordinates and choose 90 from this position. Okay, So we're all set in regards to it being rotated. Our rotation is going to follow this green axis in its vertical plane. So. Once we've got this created, we need to go in and create a cube. All right. We're going to scale that down to represent a fan blade. Make it nice and thin. And let's get a view from the top so that we're not exceeding the boundaries of our cylinder. It looks like possibly we are, so let's scale that down a touch. All right. And then we'll move this guy up. So let's move it up, and we want it so that it's, I have it uh, snapping enabled, I'm going to disable it right now by pressing P on my keyboard and then disabling snapping. We're going to need to re-enable that later on. So let's move this guy up to the top, and we want it just embedded inside that cylinder a little bit, so it looks pretty good. Now we need to change the rotational axis on this cube so that it is in the center of the uh, cylinder. So we need to make sure that we're editable by right-clicking the cube, choosing Make Editable. And we'll need to depress and activate our Axis Modification tool to move that axis. So we're actually going to move where this cube rotates by moving its axis to the center of the cylinder rather than moving the cube itself. So while we have our Axis Modification tool enabled, let's go to our right view. We'll zoom out here. And we need to pull this down so that it is in the center of that cylinder. Okay, now here's where we're going to need to enable snapping again. If we go to our cylinder, we'll see that its axis is in the very center, and that's where if you rotate the cylinder from it will its axis will be as if look at it as a bicycle tire rim where you've got the center hub and all the spokes radiating out. It rotates from the absolute center. So we need to make sure that our fan blade, our cube,
rotates along that same axis of, uh, as the cylinder does. So on your keyboard, press P to enable snapping, then click Enable Snapping. With your cube selected, we're going to zoom in, and we're going to drag that axis down. so that it snaps right to the center. That snapping can be a little bit tricky if you're uh, like me. I'm used to enabling snapping by pressing shift when I move. And at that, that instance there, I was moving. Uh, although snapping was enabled, I was disabling it when I press shift. OK, so our cube is now centered up in the exact same area as a cylinder. OK, so we can zoom back out, jump back into perspective view. Now, if I were to rotate this manually, first I'd need to disable my axis modification tool. And if I were to rotate this manually, you will see that it now rotates from the center of that cylinder, just like we wanted. Okay, so next we need to duplicate many of these cubes. So while it's selected, press Control C and then Control V to paste. And we're going to rotate it along this red axis. Uh, we're going to disable snapping, press P, and disable snapping, hold shift, and we're going to rotate this 45 degrees. So what you need to do is first click to select that, and then press shift, and then you'll get your snapping feature. So we're going to go 45 degrees, control C, control V, and we're going to click it, press shift, and rotate 45 degrees, okay, control C, control V, Click it, press shift, rotate 45 degrees, control C, control V, click it, press shift, rotate 45 degrees, and so on. Control C, control V, and we're going to keep rotating this in increments of 45 degrees. important that you select that first before you press shift or else it won't rotate properly. Okay, so we've got all these guys in place. Now we need to put a little pitch on these. So we'll begin at the top. We're going to select that. And with the green axis, click it, hold shift, and we're going to rotate. Oops. Click it, press shift, and we're going to rotate that guy 25 degrees. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Click it, press shift, rotate 25 degrees. Click it, press select it, rotate 25 degrees. And we're going to keep marching around here. Click it, press shift, rotate 25 degrees. Get a little bit disoriented here, upside down. Click it, press Press shift and rotate 25 degrees. Click it, press shift, rotate 25 degrees. Click it, press shift, and rotate 25 degrees. Same thing with this one, we're about to get there. Okay, so we're good. Everybody's rotated, so we need to zoom back out and get a look at this. Now you'll see, if you look at the screen here, you can see our axes are completely out of whack. All of them, if we were to try to rotate this now, let me give you an example. Well, let's, let's not right now because we need to connect all these fan blades, all these cubes to that cylinder. So with our cubes, by control clicking and selecting all of our cubes, after they're selected, right click and choose connect objects and delete. Okay, so now they're all one object. But our axis is still out of kilter. It needs to be so that this red axis is lined up vertically with our rotational axis of our cylinder. So select this red axis or the green axis to we're going to rotate that green that green axis to move our red axis in line with our cylinder. So select it, click shift, and we're going to move that guy this direction here. Actually, that wasn't what we wanted. We needed to select our axis modification tool first. Click it, press shift, and we're going to rotate that there. 
you'll see how you can really mess things up if you forget to manipulate that and enable your access modification tool. Okay, so remember, ultimately we're going to always rotate on our green axis. So we need to do one more thing. We need to rotate this blue axis to get the green axis in line with this where the red one is now. So select your green axis, press shift, and we're going to bring that green axis right in line with that vertical of the uh, the vertical axis of that cylinder. So now everything's good. All right. So at this point, I'll need to take my cube and my cylinder, have them both selected, and right-click them and choose Connect and Delete. All right, so we're good. What we've got now, if we select our cube, you'll see that we have our green axis in line with our vertical plane of our cylinder. And if we go into our front view and I select that cube and, and we're to rotate it, or act, actually act as if I were going to move or modify that uh, axis, you'll see it's perfectly centered in our scenes, the objects that we're going to involve a rotation with. Okay, so we'll go back, disable our axis modification tool. Alright, so now what do we need to do? Well, let's uh, make sure we rewound, select our cube, and we're going to enter a keyframe right at the very beginning of the scene. Okay, so so this scene is 30 frames per second. In order to get one full revolution, which would take one second, we need to set our second keyframe at 30 on our timeline. So let's move our indicator to 30 on our timeline. All right. And we've got our first keyframe set. Now we're going to take and rotate this cube, or this uh, object, on its green rotational axis just short of 360 degrees. So again, select it, press shift, and then rotate this guy around. You see that green area that's indicating your percentage of rotation. And this would be, right here would be 360. We want to be just short of that. So take your, take your finger off of shift and back up just a little bit, like 357, 358, or something of that nature. At this point, it keyframe. Okay, now rewind and press play. Okay, so you see that it only went one rotation. Now, here's what you'll need to do. See how it stopped after one rotation? Go up top under your layout and you're going to choose the animation from the dropout under layout. So, up top right, choose animation. It's going to change you over to the animation mode within Cinema 4D. Now, on the bottom left here, Expand out the cube, which is the name of this object overall, it's just called cube. And under its rotation, you'll see we have our keyframe from 0 to frame 30. Select the rotation drop down. You just, just it, you don't need to select everything else. If you select this, it will select them all. So select rotation. And then up top, on the right, under your attributes, under the properties tab, under the before and after, you need to change that to repeat for both of those. So before says repeat, after says repeat. At this point, enter the number of repetitions and I could say um, 500, 500, and at this point we're all good. Let's go back to our startup view. Okay, we're going to exit animation view and go back in the startup view. And so here we are. And if we were to rewind this scene to its beginning, click play, you'll see that it rotates and rotates and rotates and rotates. Won't stop. Now, if, say I had a, a reason in my scene that only wrote, maybe it was a uh, chopper that had a missile hit and the blades were going to stop. Um, at this point, I could further keyframe some uh, additional movements in here where it slowed down. Let's say we're getting one rotation now every second. If I wanted to drop it to, uh, let's go to frame 200 here. I could add another keyframe here and I could slow that rotation down so where it would do uh, another complete rotation. So if say the chopper had a missile hit, it was hit, now that propeller started slowing down, that'd be how you do that. You would just have, you see here we're, you're gaining a full rotation in one second. So every 30 frames we're adding another second to the duration of this rotation. So hope that helps you guys. and. Uh,
it's just uh, a good way to get you introduced in how to looping things because in the beginning looping your uh, objects can be a little bit tricky there's just a few steps in there that uh, if you get one wrong uh, you'll have difficulty uh, in having a successful loop so I hope that helps you guys and if you like my videos give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more in the future you know the trick please subscribe alrighty so talk to you later bye bye